Well guys, this is an MX120 case tractor. And back here you've got your PTO solenoid. There's just a coil with on a cartridge valve. This is the pressure check for it. And I'm trying to remember PTO speed sensor. Should be a PTO speed sensor. That's these two wires right here. Okay. So I'll show you something real quick on these MX and, and keep in mind I went through this entire procedure the other day on this tractor. The PTO kicks on for just a little bit and then it kicks off. So on these, and when I when I got to this tractor, the I couldn't get this PTO light to even come on. And I took this right hand console apart and it was unplugged. And so the light the light uh, harness so I got that plugged in and I got kept getting a code 67 and basically that's telling you that the inputs not matching the output speed um, I went through their entire exhaustive long drawn out procedure the other day that guy there when he comes back by He's going to get his ass ripped for driving like a fucking idiot. My dog's right there, and he was probably doing 40, 50 miles an hour right here, coming by here. So I think he needs his ass chewed a little bit. Anyway, don't sit in the seat. Turn the PTO on, and then just turn the key on. The light will come up solid. And then it'll blink. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And it'll do it again. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so it's throwing a 67 code, same as it did before. be able to see PTO speed right there. Okay. So now we get the book out and let's go over this entire procedure again so that way we're not guessing. So, yeah, we'll just start from scratch because these tractors here, this PTO doesn't come out the back uh, like a John Deere. I mean, you got to pull the cab, split the back end off, and then gut it. Okay, I got the laptop over here on the waste oil tank in the shade where I can read it. Okay, so the definition of code 67 is... PTO and engine speed signals do not match after six seconds of manual PTO engagement. After three seconds, auto PTO engagement. Loosen, the first step is loosen the PTO speed sensor and check to, check to a torque of 20 foot-pounds. Check the operation of the PTO. Okay, let's, let's just do what we're supposed to do here. I've already went through this once and kept coming up with the same conclusions that there was something physically wrong with the PTO. I just pulled the cartridge valve out here a minute ago and I didn't see anything wrong with it. Here's your PTO speed sensor. Oh, I see. That's, that's supposed to be in there. There we go. 
Okay, so what size is that? Now, how are you supposed to torque that? I mean, how you, how are you going to get a socket over that to torque that? I guess I could get a crow's foot. But... I wonder if it would just be, if it would pay just to pull it out and just see if it's like got some metal on the end of the magnetic pickup on it or something. What size is that thing? What size is that? Like maybe one inch. Man. See what it looks like, huh? I'm sure it doesn't have much of debris or metal filing stuff for the magnetic pickup part of it, throwing the reading off. Oh, hang on, let me hang on, let me get a plug and stick in there. Lots of oil coming out there. I don't see nothing wrong with that. But let's look at the book here because I think they want you to, before I put it back in there, it'll be easier to ohm check it with it out of there. Check TO speed sensor circuit, go to test nine PTO speed sensor on page 52. Uh, so let's on, hang on. These PDF manuals, I. I have to take a picture of the actual page I'm on, that way I can just go right back to it. Maybe there's a better way to do it. 1522. So what's page 52? What page are we on? What page is this anyway? This is 34, so we want to go to 52. Alright. Oh, how did I do that? How could I possibly do that? PTO speed speed sense for carrying out the following test. Refer to circuit tests. Blah blah blah. Field is operating correctly, but the instrument panel does not read PTO speed. Go to check three. Okay, so checkpoint check one PT between PTO speed sensor and connector terminal. Okay, I'm gonna do check two right now because I got the speed sensor out. So Check between PTO speed sensor, connector terminals 1 and 2, reading 2700 to 3300 ohms. So let's go get the meter out. Okay, so here we go with the speed sensor. I got this, I need to get it up there a little bit higher where I can read it a little better. Ah, come on. Three point one K. So the spec was twenty seven hundred, I think, to what? What was it? Twenty seven hundred to three thousand? Maybe the speed sensor's bad, huh? Come on. 
having a hard time. I need to put alligator clips or something on it. Three point one four ohms. I wonder if it changes any if we put it in there. Cause I checked it the other day and it's in spec. It's out of spec now. And after this whole thing with this coil the other day on this goofy PT or uh, power clock solenoid, uh, if it ain't dead on, then I probably should replace it. I guess. <laughs> According to that, it's out of spec. I don't really know how I'm going to torque that to 20 foot-pounds. Um, I do not have a crow's foot that's one inch. I think I go up to like three-quarter on crow's feet. So, 20 foot-pounds. Check it with it in the tractor and just see if anything changes. Now I'm right at three. Just a touch. I'm at three dot zero eight two. Hmm, that's kind of a tough one there. What do you do with that? You know, do you shit can it and go get another one, and then hopefully that fixes it? I mean, it's. When it's out of the machine, it's like 100 ohms out of spec. And it's close to that with it in there. Now, I know where an MX-110 tractor is. I might go... One of my other customers has one, and I know they'd let me borrow it. I'd go there and steal that PTO speed sensor out of there. Let's go to the rest, do the rest of the procedure, and see what happens. Let me guess this thing. Shit the bed again. Okay, so now we're going to be doing check between PTO speed sensor connector terminal to harness side or wire 224 brown and white to ground. Ground, okay. Continuity. Okay. A little bit kind of questioning the speed sensor with its being out of spec. I mean, I had like 30, almost 3,200 ohms, almost 200 ohms out of spec with it out of it. 3,180 something. It changed about 100 ohms putting it back in the machine. Okay, so here's our brown wire right here. And that's just fine. 0.002 to ohms. Nothing wrong with that. The 
the little keeper keeps staying in the I'm not supposed to do that okay let's go see what the next step is So we did check one, we did check two. Um, oh, I was wrong, guys. It's 2700 to 3300 ohms. It's in spec specification. There's nothing wrong with it. Okay. So remove the right hand console side cover and disconnect J1 black from the PTO controller. Disconnect instrument cluster connector C2. Okay, so let me let me uh, pull the right hand this remove the right hand console side cover. Okay, let me which one's the side cover? That's gonna be would that be this. That should be this, right? means I'm probably gonna have to pull all this shit off to get this off all right let's let's do what it says okay guys I got this controller unplugged I gotta change my terminal leads here smaller probes so you can get in there okay um, I took a picture of the layout of what they wanted me to do between instrument see check between instrument cluster connector c2 pin a12 and connector j1 black pin 12. okay where are the numbers at do i need to get my glasses on let me take a picture of the back side of this I'll blow it up with my phone. See if I can read what that says. I'm not having a lot of luck there, guys. Let me get my glasses out. And I gotta remember where I put them. I think I laid them on the back of my service truck here, I think. I hope. The numbers are so small I can't read them. Get all blurry. Sucks getting old, you know what? Still having a hard time making that out. That number on that end. Well, I'm still having trouble. So what color is the wire? Um, um, connector C12, P12, J1 black pin 12 or wire 224 find the wire number here wire 224 now I can read those it's a blue one yeah wire 224 well, how many pins are there? One, two, three, four, five, six. So it's going to be this one. It could be this one, this one, this one, or this one. Two, seventy-six C, two, twenty-four B. How about this one right here? I bet this is going to be the one. That says two twenty-four B. That doesn't say two twenty-four. Alright, so I'm on pin 12 here, the wire 224, 
I'm supposed to go to A12 on this one over here on the instrument cluster. Which is, come on, I got a cluster going on here. Hang on a second, let me get this untangled. How the hell did that get like that? Okay, so let's go over here. Uh, number 12. Yeah, pretty much 0 .00, 0 0.6 ohms, so there's not, nothing wrong with that, okay? Let's go read the book again in the shade where I can read the thing. Wake the computer up. Okay, check four between PTO speed sensor conner, term, connector terminal one, harness side for wire 224, yellow, and connector J1 black pin 12. Okay, so now we're gonna go out the window here. Don't know if I got enough lead on this. Should I plug this back in to the instrument cluster? I don't know. Didn't really, it's not real specific on that part of the directions. Let's see if we can put this maybe in a in-between location like so. And we'll take the red lead and stick it back in the blue wire right there. We'll go out to the yellow wire on the actual harness side of the connector, and this little two pin Deutsch connector on the speed sensor. I accidentally hit the uh, record button and shut the recording off. Lead here. The yellow wire. And let's see. We got one ohm of resistance, which I don't think that's I think that's fine. It doesn't really tell you, it just says continuity. Alright, let's go look at the next check. Uh, that checks out to be fine. I say continuity. Yep. Important. Continue to follow the error code fault tree before replacing any major components. Note. If the readings are correct, replace PTO speed sensor. Reconfigure. If the readings are correct, replace PTO speed sensor. Reconfigure the PTO to the new PTO speed sensor. Okay. Why would you change that if the readings are correct? Okay. Well, I, I'm going to carry on with the uh, troubleshooting procedure. What page were we on? Oh, how did I do that? Okay. Loosen PTO Air did that. We did PTO speed sensor circuit to go to test. Blah, blah, blah. On page 52, we did that. PTO speed sensor circuit, okay, yes. Check alternator speed signal from W terminal. Go to test 18. Alternator speed signal on page 66. Um, okay. I think that's, you're going to be, because they're running the speed off the W terminal on the alternator, and I see that's a new alternator on there, so that uh, makes me wonder. Um... Page 66. What page are we on here? That's 51. 66. Okay, we'll go down to 66. I'll be back when we get there. Okay, check the instrument cluster is programmed with the correct engine RPM constant. Refer to the section 4002 instrument cluster programming. If the constant is not correct, reprogram the correct constant. <clears throat> and reconfigure the PTO, PTO configuration on page 7. So I guess we better go find that and check that. I guess we need to find out whether he's got a 540, a 750, or a 1000. What has he got in here? That's a 540 shaft sticking out. 
Sure looks like a 540 to me. It's got the coarse spines on it. 540R PMPTO programming code, menu code 8, page 14. Okay. Okay, I think this is it right here. Okay, yeah. 540 RPM PTO programming menu code step 27. If the menu code C, C, displayed is not as shown, press switches A or B until the menu code 8 is displayed. The PTO and 540 symbols will appear and flash on and off. Okay. Let's just see before I get too far ahead. I'm going to plug the instrument cluster back in. Okay. And you can't really read that thing because it's got light on it. So probably ought to plug the PTO controller back in. Two. Okay, what do I do with the key that they have broken off and doesn't want to stay anywhere where it's supposed to be? I don't know how I'm going to read this thing. Turn off the... You turn this shit off. There we go. Alright, I'm going to have to shade this thing. Now I forgot what the hell it said. <laughs> Time I put, plug all the shit back in and do all that. Okay. It's a menu code. The menu code C display is not shown. Press switches A or B until the menu code 8 is displayed. Okay. It says 540, but where's the 8 at? That says 540, but where's the 8 at? Where the hell is that supposed to be? Well, if it's there somewhere, you sure as shit can't see it. I mean, that says 540. I don't know about the menu 8. And that says 540 on it. I don't know if we're doing that right or not, folks. Okay. The instrument cluster is so bad you can't really read it. Well, I never did get no eight there, so maybe I probably got to get into programming mode. I bet before I eat, I bet I'm all screwed up here. Okay, so I bet we need to get into programming mode. Let me look at that. Press and hold the engine PTO RPM switch A and turn the key switch counterclockwise to accessory position. The top digital display should. Display the menu code 1 as shown. Release the switch. The display E will begin to flash for the hour meter. You change the menu code number, press switch A to decrease and B to increase. Okay. So I wasn't, that was not right what I was doing there. It's the thing, you got to be kind of 
thorough on these instructions or you'll miss a critical step so let's make sure his accessory works before we even do that I know mean, you can't see nothing hell I can't see anything either this cluster is not very good shape on this tractor okay so they want you to hold that hey look at that let's go to menu 8 Four, five, six, seven, eight. Is that on eight or is it missing a digit or? I can't read that. God, there's just nowhere to go with this camera, guys. Three, four, five. Six. It just goes to six. What do you do about that? I can't get to eight. It goes one, two, three, four, five, six, and starts back over at one. What the hell does a guy do about that? Now I'm at seven. There we go. Now I got to eight. I don't know how I did that, but I, I got there. And I wonder if that's like a select or what. I don't know. I'm not really certain how I got there, but I did it. Okay. Press and hold AB at the same time. The menu code will change from one. 12 or 24 will appear on the digital display D. Clock you with the kind of blank. No, selecting 12 where we will program the clock to a. Okay. I just want to select the menu that I'm in. How do I select the actual one that I'm in? To change the menu code pre number, press A to decrease the number and switch B to. In Press and hold A and B at the same time. The menu code will change to 1 and 12 or 24. Will appear on the lower digital display. Release the switches. The clock display will become blank. To change the display, press... They're telling you how to do the clock there. I want to select... Oh, programming the digital instrument clusters menus 1 to 6. Okay... How about, uh, and type 11, tire radius constant, blah, 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 service code interval, menu code 4, menu code 5, menu code 6. Okay, programming the digital instrument cluster 7 to 13. Press and hold the engine RPM PTO switch A and turn the key catch counterclockwise. The top display should one is shown. Change the menu code, press the A. Okay. If the menu code display C. If the menu code display C is not shown as not shown, press switches A and B until the menu code 6 is displayed. OLD will appear in flash on... Now, I'm confused here. So, if the menu code display C is not as shown, press switches A, B until menu code 6 is displayed. OLD will appear in flash on and off in the hour meter display G. Hang on a minute. Know if I'm doing this right or not. God, I can't get both of my fingers in there to press them both at the same time. Okay, that's flashing like they said it. Well, you son of a bitch, that's not what I wanted to do. I can't. <laughs> 
There we go. I finally got it. So we got a 94. So we got 8 and a 94. We got a 540 showing over here. What's it supposed to say? Okay. Press and hold switch A and B at the same time. I did that. Release the switches. The 540 constant will appear over here. I do. I got 8 and I got a 94. Press switch A and to decrease the 540 constant or switch B to increase the 540 constant. For the following table for correct PTO on, con, option constant. MX100, MX110, MX120. This is an MX120 North American edition and it's on 94. So that's correct. Okay. Now... I'm really questioning this guys because what you're supposed to do here is go to the W because the tack is actually running off the alternator and I see this alternator just been changed. Now I'm wondering is did did your PTO quit working after you changed this and put this aftermarket alternator on here? I mean I'm sure that Case International doesn't build their own alternators. I understand that, but you see a brand new alternator and you see PTO problems in one of the step procedures and diagnosing the PTO problem is check the speed from the alternator. So <laughs> here's my problem. I don't have a good way to check that and I'll show you why. Okay, so we already did the PTO configuration. That's set right. Turn the key switch off. Carefully move the cover from the rear alternator, which it doesn't have one. Connect your positive lead to the W terminal and your negative to negative. Okay, and then they're telling you about the following checks, and I know what they're doing. The following checks require a CS, CAS 2636 optical tachometer to set the engine RPM. So what you're going to do is you would have that optical tachometer... I used to have, I used to have a, and I cannot find it, I used to have a tool on the old 6.9s and 7.3 pre-combustion chambered diesel engines in the Fords, we had a tool that would come around and it would, it would sense the pulse off number one injector, and then, I can't remember how it all worked, but it, it basically would tell you the engine RPM based off the pulse off number one injector and i'll I, it's been so that's been 20 25 years ago since i've used that i have no i just was in there looking at the toolbox i don't know where that's at i don't really think it's going to do any good at all to check it you know you could go in there on the instrument cluster and set your speed but that's determining your speed so if you try matching your hertz with what's on there that that's irrelevant because you need the optical tachometer to set it say if you want to check it at a thousand rpm and that's saying 1200 rpm and saying so many hertz well the hertz might match the rpm that's right there obviously but if the rpm isn't right here and there's a mismatch between the two you're not doing any good so, that being said, we're going to skip this step. I'm going to have to probably either find a tool to do this with, to do this correctly. I don't want to guess. I'm really questioning that. Or, see if I can find an alt. You know what? I'll go over there to that MX-110. That's what I'm going to do. I'll call the ranch over there and I'll ask them if I can go steal that alternator off that tractor and put it on here for a test. Because I know the PTO works on that one. And if the PTO works, then that alternator's a problem. But let's just go through the rest of the steps, guys, while we're here. I had a YouTube viewer send this to me, and this has been one of the handiest tools. I, I even bought another one. <laughs> I saw another one's for sale on the Snap-on truck, and I bought it. I thought, because this thing has been just so freaking handy. 
especially with the amount of electrical stuff that I do. I'm always needing longer leads or something all the time. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't trust that test without using the right tool. So we're going to get that other alternator off that other tractor today and come back. Let's see, what page was the original? That's test 18. I think we're on like page 37 or something like that. Oh, oops. Now we're in the wiring. Step nine. I don't remember. What the hell? Hang on. Okay, so here's where we're at. PTO. We're not going to say PTO speed circuit. We're not going to mess with that for right now. Uh, we're going to go to this next step. Carry out PTO solenoid circuit test. Go to test 8 PTO solenoid on page 51. Okay. All right, what page was this? 35, page 51. Before carrying out the solenoid test, blah, blah, blah. We already did that. For error code 53, we don't have an error code 53. Disconnect PTO solenoid from the transmission harness. Checkpoint. Check between terminals A and B of the PTO solenoid. Should be 10 ohms. Bad coil. Okay, let's go check that real quick. Uh, where is my ohm meter? It's right there. finger in here okay. 10 ohms let's get her down here where we can read it Ten point four, ten point three, ten point two, ten point two ohms. Okay. It says approximately that the, the book says approximately ten ohms. Doesn't it? Yes, ten ohms approximately. Okay. Important it's PTO solenoid coil is replaced reconfigure PTO to the new solenoid. Turn key switch off, remove the right hand console cover, and disconnect J2, the green one, PTO controller. Check between PTO solenoid connector terminal A, harness side for 597 light blue connector, J2 green, wait, 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 wait. Between PTO solenoid connector terminal A, harness side, Four wire five nine seven light blue connector J two green pin four. Okay. Light blue. So can we tell? I can't tell what color is what on that. Are these? Boy, those sure seem to be spread out though. These pins. You know what? And they're soaking wet with oil. Makes you wonder. Mm. 
We're going to collapse the terminals on these and make them tighter. I've definitely seen those kind of problems cause some really funky things to go on. Bad connections on terminals like that. Yeah. That wire looks like it's green there. Let's peel it back, back up in here. I mean, I got a, there's the 597 wire right there. I mean, that one there is green as can be. So we got, it's brown, okay, what am I thinking, F between PTO solenoid connector terminal A for wire 597, what, B on the side for pin, what, I'm confused here, hang on, okay, pin 4, I found the, that looks like it's green, but it's just been so the wire that it's not. It's it. It's supposed to. It's green looking, but it's actually a blue wire. Point five ohms. Nothing wrong with that. Now, what do they want you to do? Important when you guys are checking things, especially CAN bus resistances on any CAN bus systems. Make sure the batteries are disconnected. Okay, so, just did that. Check between connector D2 green, pin 4, 597 red, and ground. Okay. Let's see. Uh, let's put, I got an idea. Let's go like this. Pin 4. Let's go out here. Uh, we know this is a good ground here because we already checked the ground. Uh, my leaves aren't quite long enough. So I got nothing, nothing there, which I'm not supposed to have anything there. Okay, so we know that's fine. No continuity. Circuit between PTO solenoid connector and connector D2 shorted to ground. This is the normal condition, this is the bad condition. Okay. Between PTO solenoid connector terminal B, harness side, the brown wire, and pin 5 on the J2 connector. So now I want to go to pin 5, or pin. The other wire, which is the brown one, that should be this one over here. And then we go to the next wire over on this connector. Yeah, that's a light blue. 0.5 ohms, nothing wrong with that. And I'm sure we're probably going to check that one to ground. What do you want to bet? Well, wait. Would that be right? One of them should be a power one should be ground, so... Ah, they want to check it. Yeah, that's what I thought. To ground. Okay, we'll check it. Okay, let's do that real quick. Go back on that one, and then go back outside where I know I had a good ground because I checked it before there. But what I might do, let's see... Go back to one, two, three, it's gonna be that one. And I'm gonna put a heavier lead, just scratch it a little harder. I got my light lead, my little light probes on there right now for these smaller terminals. And you know what? 
I know for a fact that this brown wire on this one was ground. So there's nothing there. Okay, we're good there. Okay. Now if we go to check six on this. Okay, check six must be carried out with the PTO solenoid connected past the positive probe of the multimeter past the weatherproof insulator to terminal A of the PL PTO solenoid connector. Put the PTO control lever in off position, turn the keys to the on position. Check between PTO solenoid connector terminal A for the 59. See, check between PTO solenoid connector terminal A and light blue to ground. Zero volts. And now what? That's with the PTO off, right? Off position. Zero volts. Okay. Let's check that. What does it say? I gotta just go over this again. Between PTO solenoid connector terminal A. Okay, then ground. Okay. So, what we gotta do here, guys, is get this. And. you plug it in and we want it on this wire right here Okay, now what I need to do here is, I know, let's see, um, move my little clamp at. So before we, you know, I should what I should do here real quick. Just make sure that this is gonna work. make sure that we're getting a decent ground um, well okay I know how to check this I know how to check this I'm gonna clamp this here and I know I know for a fact that this wire right here was ground this brown wire on this solenoid PTO 0.6 ohms. That's a that's so that's a good ground. I have to verify that I've got a good ground before I decide to. Now, what they want you to do is get in the cab. You're supposed to have that plugged in, like they say. And my lead just came out. That's that would have really thrown me way off. Okay, let's read this again, folks. Uh, okay, check between PTO solenoid connector. Let's say, check six with care of the PTO solenoid connected pass positive probe, basically, yeah, back probe it. And 
put the PDO control lever in the off position, turn the key switch to the on position. Okay, should be zero volts. So that's in the off position. Okay, and I gotta get this on volts. Okay, where's the key at? I think I just unplugged it. I think I just unplugged it. Let's go back there and plug it back in. Yep, that's exactly what happened. I felt it. And I think that thing's reading voltage, guys. Yeah, we're reading 2 volts. 2.16 volts. Okay. Should say 0 volts. That's what it says. Wonder what happened. Oh, shit. I just dropped the key down in here somewhere. So, with the key on, I'm reading... What happens if you turn the PTO on? Doesn't change anything. But it's not going to do anything anyway. So, that check there doesn't seem to pass the smell test, does it? Alright, let's read this again. So, zero volts. Bad PTO controller. Also check the circuit between PTO solenoid connector and connector J2 has not shorted to a 12 volt supply. Well, huh. continue to follow the error code fault tree before replacing any major components. I've got two volts on there and it's saying it's supposed to be zero volts. Let's do check seven. So right now it's questionable with alternator and the control module. Uh, important. Continue to follow the error code. So we're placing major components. If the PDO controller is replaced, configure. Okay, so let's go back to the 1552. I think is is that the 15? Maybe it's 1522. I don't remember. Yeah. So we just did the solenoid circuit test, which were questionable about the control module. Carry out regulated pressure test and adjustment. Refer to section 8001, hydraulic schematics. I've already, you now basically you turn it on. Carry out PTO supply pressure test. Let me go to, let me find all this stuff. All right, so they want you to do the pressure, the regulated pressure test. Well, the regulated pressure supplies the PTO with the oil. I mean, so if the pressure is low going to the PTO back there, then check the pressure regulator, you know, that regulated pressure. So I check, I just go to the test right on the PTO. So 540, so the 540 uh, pressure is different than the 1000 pressure. Engage 540 PTO RPM, pressure must not exceed 196 to 240 PSI. 1500 rpm okay let's see what we got here i don't know why this thing's going off do i have something like uh, something was beeping and raising hell in here when i i don't know all oh, that shit's plugged back in do i have everything plugged in back here let's make sure before we Go down that road. Everything's plugged in back here. I got my hydraulic hose plumbed in back here. I don't know why the buzzer was going off. I messed with the e-brake and nothing changed, but I don't know why, it was, why it's doing that. Yeah, what the hell is it doing that for? Like in gear or something? I don't know why that 
it's going off like that. And the park light's on, the caution light's flashing. I don't know why that's going off. Well, let's check this. Figure that out later, I guess. 1500 RPM, which we don't know if that's right, but. Something totally shit the bed on me here because I can't, <clears throat> it doesn't matter whether I have the PTO on or off now, everything's plugged in. Let me make sure I don't have something goofy going on back here. All I got is a gauge plugged into the test port. There's that. I don't have anything. Yeah, nothing's hooked up anywhere there. ETO speed sensor is plugged in. Why is it doing that all of a sudden? You know, I can't even get the blink codes out of the PTO now, and this buzzer won't quit going off. What the hell's that all about there? That's in neutral. Park brakes on. Yeah, I can't even get the PTO to, to throw a code now. Even with it off, the light's on constantly. That is really strange, man. I don't know what to make of that. I wonder if we lost the controller on it. Because we had two volts on that with it off. I don't know what to make of this. I don't know what to make of this problem. I'm really about scared of grabbing that controller out of that. The other tractor is an MX110, which it would work here. But. I don't know, would you screw up a damn controller swapping them around? <laughs> Let's, uh... You know, it don't seem like it did that until I did that one test. For voltage on that one wire. So I went and got the control module out of that MX-110 and I got it plugged in. For some reason that, that other control module must have totally just shit itself because I had 2.8 volts on that one test with key on engine off on this blue wire and to ground. Well as you can see I've got millivolts there. It's 8.8. .8. Basically I have no volts there. and. <laughs> I mean, but this controller, the original one, it must have really crapped itself because, I mean, it, as soon as you plug it in to the, to this one, it beep and it won't do anything. Let's see what happens. Let's see, let's, uh, three, four, one, two, three, four, let me count them. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, 
Looks like a 36. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's go see what a 36 is. I had to plug the laptop in. It's in the office now. I got a feeling that's probably like an incompatible software code because that that one over there had an auto switch, which this one didn't. Oh, come on, man. Did I shut that off? I guess I did. I'll be back. Auto PTO indicator lamp bulb has failed because this one does not have auto PTO. I'm pretty certain right now we more than likely lost the PTO control module. Let's see if it'll... Let's see for one thing. Let's, uh... We know that we got zero volts back here, which is what we're supposed to have. Let's take this off just for a precaution. I don't know what could happen, but I don't want a problem here. And I wonder, I kind of like to would, I don't know if I can put my knees on the seat and activate the seat switch and see if the PTO will actually turn. It may not work right once I start it anyway. There's my glasses. Oh, I forgot to... PTO control module, that's the problem. Okay. I'm gonna show you something real quick. Let's unplug this, we'll plug it back into the original controller. I gotta go put this one back in that other tractor. Watch when I plug this one back in. You can't, the PTO light will come on and it will not go out. Seat, seat switch should be on and watch this. Yeah. The tractor won't even move now with this control module in there. I tried to put it in gear and move, wouldn't do anything. PTO wouldn't come on. PTO indicator light stays on solid. So we need a new control module. Okay. This one on my bumper because I gotta go put it back in early in the morning and say thank you very much to my customer for letting me do that. I was pretty certain that's what it was when I mean that's what the that's what the uh, book said. The book said if there was power on this wire, any voltage, 
at all key on engine off the control module was bad so the book was right all right guys well there you go another problem solved <laughs>